Alright, here's another video of my uh, Ice Denial Kit deck in action. I'll be facing against Near Earth Park. Now, this is a problematic ID because I need to figure out where exactly he used his influence. So, to start off, um, he only ices one server, so I'm I had a very easy decision of Dirty Laundry is HQ, and I see an NAPD contract. Well, what a way to start off the game. Um, seeing an NAPD contract with only 3 credits to your name. I would have definitely stolen it if I could, but I couldn't, so instead I, sold, I got my prof contacts going. Um, I could have ran in again, but I wouldn't see the same card accessing HQ again, so it wasn't worth it in my opinion. Alright. Uh, I begin to draw up, have a solid credit pool, and I face check his eyes. And I see an Eli. Alright, Eli is a very annoying ice for me to deal with because I don't run Corroda, I don't run Morningstar. All I have is an Inti, which you see in my hand, and I'm no way am I gonna break through Eli with just an Inti. So the, uh, that has to be parasite down. Better sooner than later, so the parasite immediately goes on to Eli. And very thankfully, I managed to get my Yog and modded up very quickly, so that allows me to play them straight from hand. And I review the toe move sitting on HQ. Maybe I should reserve my parasite for the toe move, no? Yep, the toe move is going to be a huge problem because I won't be able to penetrate through for quite a long time. So I can only continue drawing up and at least I see a pretty quick data sucker before he can uh, react by icing up archives. So I get one token. And once again, I see the NAPD contract which he sneakily dumped into archives. With three credits, I can't do anything. Alright, so here's the thing with Nia of Park. Um, he is drawing so many cards with his ability. So far he has drawn two extra cards with ability. You have to think that he's starting a gender flooded in HQ. And uh, that's why he's tossing things like NAPD contract in archives. He's not expecting me to run archives, definitely. Uh, yeah, so I think this is a sure sign that he's getting a gender further. Alright, so I draw up with prof contacts and I try to get the NAPD contract. Um, surprisingly enough, he doesn't contest. I thought he would install a Jackson Howard to uh, allow him to reshuffle the NAPD back into R&D. So I had to face check his remote to see what it was. So it's a marked accounts. Uh, yep, so that is where his economy is coming from. I think marked accounts and pet campaign will be very standard economy for near of hub simply because if you are going to make the full use of his ability, you want these economy uh, assets. And Given the nature of my deck, I cannot contest these assets because they are way too expensive for trash. So I install the Inti and start going to work on his R&D. It's a pop-up. And I'm not scared of the second ice because he only has 3 credits, but it's an Eli that stops me once more. So, well, at least I'm keeping him completely broke. Um, he's Raising all the eyes, and as a result, he is constantly below a uh, credit threshold that he would like to meet. So, so far for influence, I've only seen two Eli's. I have a feeling he's running uh, the Scotch Earth variant, given that he's running any PD contract, but it could just as well be Baltic Labor. So, I need to ensure that I run with sufficient credits in the event of being hit by mid seasons. So Lady Cast drops on the table. <coughs> Alright, he continues installing more stuff. That's the problem with NBN. You have to check those remotes. It could be a sneaky astro script being ready uh, being prepared to score any time. But again checking these remotes takes up so much time that you cannot afford to waste time on. Because you need to get your rig going and draw more cards and get more money. Alright, so 
I see a plus screen and I decide to run that because it's probably an agenda and I was right. I get the breaking news and I figured that he was running mid seasons because why else would he put a naked breaking news on the table? So uh, I just took one more credit and hope that he wouldn't miss seasons me. And if he does, I'll at least have the plus speed to get to uh, if I get tech flooded. That wasn't the case. So thankfully, I get away scot free by uh, with stealing the agenda. Before his turn, turn starts, I summon the parasite. Now I want to deal with that two move. And I can do so because I have two parasite to uh, two data sucker tokens. Uh, I'll soon be able to contest HQ. And I really want to because looking at my hand you can see Asher. Sure. I want to rearrange his eyes. Uh, the Eli on R and D, the inner Eli on R and D is causing a lot of problems and it would be really nice to reshuffle stuff. Alright, he makes a very bold play here. He goes for the fast track Astro script and installs it in the remote. Uh, you have to assume that that's the Astro script. So, oh dear. That, that is some confidence there, knowing that I'm a kid. Um, that means that ice over the Astro script is more than 3 strength. I was wondering to myself what it could be. Or rather, 5 strength because data sucker. I have 2 data sucker tokens, so it must have been something I couldn't break. Um, but I couldn't for the life of me figure out what it was. But, well, I saw it. It was a Lotus. I cannot use data sucker tokens on it, so even though it is only 4 strength, I cannot break it with my load yaw. So I can only resign to drawing up and drawing up some more. <clears throat> Made a tough choice to discard the Kraken, uh, didn't feel that it would come into play. Now he makes a very... Uh, he, yeah, he makes... A, uh, he decides to clear virus the compass, which... Usually it's the right play, but he didn't expect that I actually drew up my fantastic combo. Last turn, thanks to all the drawing up, I managed to find my Dinosaurus, and as a result, I was able to load my Yom onto the Dinosaurus and snipe the Astro script from his reward. So that was huge. Um, I was very lucky to see my Dinosaurus. Uh, it allowed me to get within Lotus Field range, and now, more importantly, he cannot threaten me with most of his ice anymore. MBN tends to run very low strength ice and rather sparse at that few pieces of ice. So he's going to have a very hard time dealing with my uh, ice trashing with Parasite and with a uh, strength 5 yacht to take care of any of the outer ice. Alright, he installs something in the Lotus Field server. You have to think that's not an agenda because obviously I can break through it so easily. So I just continue drawing up. And I try to make a run of archives to force out his Jackson usage, and sure enough, he does. I cannot afford to let him have Jackson available because that means he can continue dumping agendas into archives and draw up more ice as he needs to. Um, in my last click, I installed a parasite on the pop up window. Uh, this does two things. Firstly, pop up windows are very annoying piece of ice that you should always parasite whenever you have the chance. And secondly, now the Eli is exposed. I can run through R&D using my yom. Um Yes, and if you saw the error message just now, um, there was nothing wrong with that because my yom is supposed to start on dinosaurs, so I did have the 4 MU I required to install the parasite. Alright, more credits, the better. Still worry about mid-seasons, it's definitely a thing. I haven't seen what he's spending his influence on. Um, only the Eli and Lotus Field, both of which are one influence, so that says my thing. Um, continue drawing up. I'm really looking to pull off the Asher, but no luck so far. So let's try an R&D access. I break through Quandry and click through Eli. That's the problem with Eli, you can click through it. And this not only gives me uh, a two card access, which is pretty important because I'm really on match point by the way. Uh, more importantly, it, gives, it slowly gives me the data sucker token I need to break through HQ. Alright, uh, he has had enough of my shenanigans. He opens the sand sand and scores a view. Firstly, that means he has no extra screen in hand. So I'm not that worried about leaving the sand sand on the table. Secondly, um, I definitely can contest the sand sand, but I don't feel like doing it even though I have so many credits. Um, all I need is one more agenda. So right now, what I want to do is to cripple him by getting more data sucker tokens and locking down his army. 
since she has no extra script HQ, I don't have to worry too much about it. Uh, nothing in R&D. And unfortunately for me, he's able to score an agenda this turn. Install, advance, and score the breaking news. Uh oh, uh oh. Okay, at least I have four cards, so he cannot scotch me down, but he chooses to blow up professional contacts. I was very, very relieved. The last thing I wanted to see there was a closed accounts. That would have changed a lot of things. But he didn't close my accounts, and as a result, I'm able to bash through HQ. And Tobolf disappears. And no, oh, I'm not going to access, I'm just going to rearrange his ice. Most notably, Fondry is going on the as the innermost piece of ice on RD, so that should annoy him. This means that you should be able to bust through RD easily. And now I will lock down HQ knowing that he's a gender flooded. And I do not want him to score any more genders on that sand side anyways. I run twice, uh, draw into a blank, and decide to finally trash the sand side because I could have gotten unlucky and not see any uh, the agenda that he might have been holding. Mm, in retrospect, perhaps moving the Lotus Field to R&D would have been a smarter choice, but it, it didn't matter because he completely destroyed his R&D server and created a new server. So this is where my kit decks shines, you see, he, I'm making him waste time, waste so much time. Um, so far, he has spent two turns, two entire turns, purging my virus counters just so that he could keep his Tobolf alive. And now he's wasting time because he's overwriting ice that he previously installed, and he's destroying ice that he spent money to res. Uh, I'm, I'm more than happy. <laughs> All his money is going to waste. All his money is going into his archives. And right now, I'm just putting the pressure on, completely punishing his. After lack of ice. I check archives because, well, he could be very sneaky with it. You never know. Uh, my aim here is to maintain R&D lock while continue slowly continuing to draw cards. I want to see another R&D interface so that to make R&D locking all that easier. And I do see it. But it's a little expensive to play at this point, so I'll just go for the normal run on R&D. I'm pretty sure the inner ice is a guard, which I'm not worried about because I can summon Parasite with Clone Shape, but that was not needed because I found his Astro Script in the game. Um, credit denials are a very strong strategy right now in the game, and there are more ways to do this besides Account Cypher and Bam. Uh, Parasite is one of the stars uh, uh, and has been exploited in many a decks, and not or otherwise. Is so powerful in uh, causing the corpse to waste time and money, and this right here shows just how effective it is. I made him, I destroyed his eight rest cost whole booth, destroyed e one Eli and moved another Eli away onto an irrelevant server, and so on. Um, I got lucky here again because he was running very few ice, and of the ice that he was running, a lot of them were cooked gates. So he, from start to finish, he had a huge problem dealing with kit and I guess that's just bad luck because not many people play kit nowadays. Speaking of credit denial, um, this friendly opponent of mine we chatted a bit after the match and apparently there is a winning kit that this on steampack.com is the winner of the Cambridge tournament and this odd deck actually uses vamp um, and magnum opus to deny credits uh, from the court. I find this a very interesting strategy and I might be trying that out sometime soon. No guarantees though. But it's certainly a very interesting, if not janky deck. This do have a look at it yourself and I would really like to see how it works in, uh, uh, in an actual game. But for now, thanks for watching and have a happy day and night. See you around.